This is one of the most realistic dreamer patterns I think I've ever tied, and it was inspired by Steve Makerwick's Realistic Brook Trout, whose information you can find linked below. To start this pattern, we'll begin with some olive thread, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the bend of our hook. Here, we'll grab some turkey feathers, pulling away the tips, and securing them tightly in place to the back of our fly. You can help ensure that it'll stay propped up by taking a few thread wraps behind it before locking it in with some following thread wraps above. At which point, we'll wrap towards the head of the fly, snip our excess free, and cover up our tag ends, using this to help build up a consistent body as we wrap back towards the tail. At which point, we'll grab some grizzly saddle hackle, stripping away some of the excess fibers, and tying these on top of our turkey feather in order to add some character. Snip the excess free and cover up your tag ends. With this complete, we'll grab some holographic tinsel, here I'm using red, and secure it tightly to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards our tail. With this complete, we'll wrap our thread forward up towards the head of the fly. Put in a couple whip finishes, set our thread aside, and begin wrapping the tinsel forward in close touching spirals. You can do this by hand, or if you have a rotating bite, you can make your life easier by using its rotary function. We'll continue wrapping it forward until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure it tightly in place and snip the excess free. We'll follow this up by adding some UV resin over the top in order to add some more shine to our pattern. Fix it in place with the UV light. We'll then grab some parapost material. Here I'm using orange, along with some black and white yarn. We'll lay these side by side, coating them in UV resin and fixing them in place in order to create a realistic fin. Here we're mimicking the distinct white line, along with black and orange of the fall brook trout. We'll secure this in place, taking care to make sure that the fin's pointed upwards before locking it down. Snip your thread free, paint it over with some UV resin, and fix it in place with a UV light. And this will be the trailer of our pattern. We'll use some black wire, stringing it through the hook eye, and swap out to a larger hook. Here I'm using a 9x long, classic streamer pattern. We'll resecure our thread, snip the excess free and continue wrapping backwards towards the bend of the hook. And before we go any further, I just want to thank everyone for helping this channel reach 250,000 subscribers, an absolutely mind-blowing number of people who are interested in fly tying. So thank you all so much for following along, helping us reach this milestone, and there's plenty more to come. As a thank you, we'll be doing the biggest giveaway on this channel that I think we've ever done. And while I think I'm gonna have to keep this pattern as a memory, I'll include plenty of other things such as hats, fly boxes, along with some flies. So if you want to enter the giveaway, as usual, go in the comments below, typing in hashtag flies, along with liking the video and clicking subscribe. And thank you again for following along. We'll grab our trailer portion, adding a few red beads to give it a gap and still allow it to be articulated. We'll secure the wire in place by taking some tight thread wraps over the top, along with a few underneath to help lock it in place. And to ensure it helps stay secure, We'll add some super glue over the top before continuing to fix it in place with our thread. Snip the excess wire free using an old pair of scissors or the back of your scissors, carefully covering up the tag ends so you don't snap your thread. With this complete, we'll wrap back towards the tail and grab some craft fur. Here I'm using olive. We'll cut a small strip free, securing this just in front of the back of our fly. 
snipping the excess free, and covering up your tag ends. We'll continue to build up some bulk for this pattern, adding some more craft fur over the top of our previous one. Snip your excess free. Once again, cover up your tag ends. Next, we'll grab some flash. Here I'm using a mix of black, green, and gold. Secure it to the back side of your fly, snip the excess free, and cover up your tag ends. At which point, we'll bring our thread forward slightly, grabbing some more craft fur, and using this to help build up some bulk. By making it shorter and shorter, then our first application of craft fur, snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. At which point, we'll grab some more of our realistic fins, flip our fly upside down, but before we attach them, we'll create a dubbing noodle of some orange ice dubbing and wrap this just in front of our craft fur. And we'll use this to help position our fins in place, this time attaching two of them in a V formation. Secure it tightly in place, wrapping back towards your dubbing ball so they splay out properly once happy. The excess free. And cover up your tag ends. We'll continue by creating another dubbing noodle of orange ice dubbing, wrapping this just in front of our fins. We'll use this to help create the underside of our fly pattern before snipping off some more craft fur and tying it in just in front of our ice dubbing. This time, we'll leave some of the excess on the back, reverse tying it in, doing so to help build up the bulk of our pattern. We'll then grab the craft fur, fold it over, and use your thread to secure it in place, this time facing back towards our tail. With this secured, we'll add some more flashaboo over the top, snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. Before creating another dubbing noodle and wrapping this over the top, each time we do this, we'll continually add more ice dubbing than the previous one, building up a transition as we begin to work towards the head of the fly. And once complete, we'll again grab some more craft fur, reverse tie it in before folding it over and securing it in place with your thread. We'll again repeat this step a few more times to continually build up some bulk as we work towards the head of our fly, starting with adding our orange ice dubbing before switching back over to some more olive craft fur. Tie it in. Fold it over and secure it tightly in place. At which point we'll switch back over to some more flashaboo to help darken up the back of our fly and add some shine. Before continuing on by building up a transition of ice dubbing, and adding some more craft fur to continue to build up the profile. We'll secure it in place. Once again, adding a little bit more ice dubbing just in front of it. With this complete, We'll grab another set of fins. This time, we want them to splay directly outwards. So we'll start with tying in one at a 90 degree angle to our hook shank, simulating the characteristic pectoral fins of the trout. Once complete, it should look something like this. Once happy with the first fin, we'll secure the second, facing out in the opposite direction, using your thread to lock it in place and taking additional thread wraps behind it They should look something like this. Snip off the excess. 
and cover up your tag ends. We'll continue with some more orange ice dubbing. Wrapping this just in front, ensuring that our fins stay locked in place before continuing to our next step. We'll then grab some more flashaboo, this time I'm just using black, and secure this over the top of our fly. Fold your excess over, trim it to length, being just shorter than our tail, before securing it tightly in place. With this complete, we'll add some more craft fur, reverse tying it once again to continue to build up the profile. At which point, we'll switch out to some white, UV ice dubbing, create another dubbing noodle, and wrapping this just in front of our craft fur, making up the cheeks of our fly pattern. With this complete, we'll grab some red saddle feathers, strip a small bit free, primarily using the marabou-like feathers towards the back of the feather, invert our fly, and secure it to the underside. Snip the excess free, cover up the tag ends, grabbing a little bit more craft fur and securing it just in front, once again reverse tying it, folding it over, and this time bringing your thread in front, before whip finishing to hold it all together. And snipping your thread free. In order to create the head section, we'll trim up some of the excess fibers, painting it over with some UV resin to help lock it in place. Fix in place with a UV light, and grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using Grizzly. This is something that I was supposed to add earlier, before the white ice dubbing, but ended up forgetting. So instead, we'll just add it in now. We'll paint this up to simulate the par marks of a young brook trout by painting the underside of it red, top side yellow, and adding a few stripes of those bluish par marks. Since we forgot to add these in beforehand, in order to add it to our pattern, we'll simply add some UV resin or super glue, poke it in towards our cheeks, and lock it in with a UV light. We'll repeat this step to the other side, and grab some eyes. Here I'm using the color Earth. Secure the eyes in place, adding a little bit of UV resin before locking in place with the UV light. And doing the same to the other side. We'll further secure these in place by filling in the gaps of the eyes with some more UV resin. And once happy, fix in place with a UV light. At which point, we'll go a little over the top by grabbing some wire. Here I'm using red as well as blue in order to create the famous blue halos of brook trout. I did this by coiling up both the blue as well as the red wire and securing them in place using some UV resin. We'll take these blue scales and secure them along our grizzly feather simply by adding some super glue, putting the blue halo in place and fixing it with a UV light. We'll continue to do this adding several to each side of our fly pattern, carefully placing them and fixing it with a UV light. And once complete, should look something like this. We'll repeat this process to the other side and fix it all in place with the UV light. And this is a realistic baby brook trout. While it's a little over the top for something you'd fish, and I'm not even really sure how it'd swim, it is extremely fun to tie and looks incredibly good on the shelf. But either way, it was an extremely fun tie and I hope you enjoyed it. And while I'm sure it would catch fish, it certainly wouldn't be my go-to pattern. So thank you all for watching and all your support along the way. And remember, make sure you comment hashtag flies if you want to join the drawing. And of course, I will see you in the next one.